Hi, and welcome to the last show of the year for me. Oh my God, I can't believe that we have already reached the end of 2018. Um, the, the year sure flew by really fast and we're on the precipice of 2019. I'd love to hear from you in the comments as to how was this year for you. For me, there were lots of ups and downs, but the things I am most grateful for is you, the viewers. Oh my gosh, you guys have been so amazing. The comments, uh, you know, every time if I'm even having a bad day, I just go and read your comments. I think I just have the best audience ever, 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 ever. I mean, I look at other people's, um, I'm showing off here, okay, because I just love you guys so much. But sometimes I look at other people's videos and eventually the comments deteriorate into people criticizing and bashing and bashing each other. For some reason that doesn't happen on my Facebook or my videos and I feel so blessed and I love you guys so much because you you really perk me up and I love doing what I do and um, and the thing is I really feel blessed because as I have spoken in past weeks about what it means to be an empath and those of you who are empaths you will completely understand is that criticism really feels strong and reverberates in your head. So I have been so blessed to get such a gentle audience and, and I love that. I just love you guys so much and I could do what I do forever, which brings me to the topic of this, this particular show, which is who would you be if no one is watching? That title, um, actually, um, I came up with that title because of a question I received from somebody who asked me whether they would be considered a people pleaser or a doormat because they take care of special needs children. And where do you draw the line between being a doormat and not being a doormat and just doing what you need to do? So my um, criteria for whether you are a people pleaser or not or whether you're a doormat or not is that are you doing what you're doing for the approval or um, or would you be doing the same thing even if no one was watching and in most cases when you're caring for someone who you care about you would be doing it regardless absolutely regardless if you have special needs children if you have aging parents who you love and you happen to be the one caring for them um, I know that speaking for myself I I care for my mother regardless and I don't need people to watch me or to compliment me or or to um, or people to to please I do it because I love her when Danny took care of me when I was sick he did it because he loved me nobody was watching and he didn't care if anyone was watching or not so that is not being a people pleaser that is not being a doormat when you do things for people you love and and I'm seeing the comments already pouring in, so thank you. Somebody just wrote, oh my God, I was just criticized all week. Oh, I'm so sorry to hear that. See, and, um, and Carolyn Oakshed says, lovely to see you. Thank you, it's lovely to see you as well. And Eleanor Mann, oh hi. Hi Anita, so happy you are on Love, uh, love Your Spiritual Violet shirt. Oh, thank you. Um, yeah, I'm so happy you are on Love Your Spiritual Violet shirt. Delphine Lacono, love from France. Oh, thank you. And um, so this is what I love about you guys. You tune in from all over the world and there is this beautiful outpouring of love. And I swear, I feel it. I really feel it. This is why I love you guys so much and always want to <laughs> outpour love on all of you. So, so back to the, um, the topic at hand, which is who would you be if no one was watching? That's a good question to keep asking yourself. And it's a good question to ask children as well, because as children, we are, um, we are conditioned to, uh, to seek out approval or to, because we are punished for um, not towing the line. And so what ends up happening is that it makes us seek approval. And when you are a, an empath, disapproval is actually something that you feel physically in your body. Now, it, 
I never realized this until I was an adult, that that's not normal. That's not how everybody feels. And um, Mary McManus says, I love your unicorn. Yeah, my unicorn was on last week and Fred or Frederica, we'll call her Freddie or him, Freddie, uh, got so many compliments that I had to bring her or him back on this week. I haven't determined whether it's a male or a female, but it's insignificant anyway. So the thing is, um, we have been so conditioned not just to seek out approval. And here's the important thing. It's about avoiding disapproval because disapproval is what really hurts in our bodies. And so in avoiding disapproval, we become people pleasers. So the question is, <clears throat> who would you be if nobody was watching, if there was no approval? And if in many cases it is doing things that no one else would do, like if, if it is in your DNA to be a caregiver, to take care of people, those are the kinds of people that make the best nurses and healers and doctors, the ones that do it just because it's who they would do, whether they got approval for it or not. I know that a lot of the things that I do now comes from that same place because it requires taking a lot of risks if you're an empath. You have to take the risk that you are going to be criticized if you're going to do things as though no one is watching and if you're going to be who you are as though no one is watching. And so when I started sharing a lot of things that I was sharing, right in the beginning, I did get a lot of criticism because it was criticism from the debunkers and the people from the more medical or science, material science-based circles. Of course, there were people that were absolutely fascinated with what had happened and they wanted to know more. However, because of the paradigm that they were in, they, they could not um, they really had to come at it from an angle of skepticism and they don't mean to criticize, but approaching certain subjects like the kinds of things we talk about, approaching it from the angle of skepticism is actually, um, it actually feels like criticism. It feels like disapproval and it kind of shuts you down. So anyway, um, so the question to really ask yourself is when you are caring for people and when you are doing things like caring for people who are sick, if this is what you would be doing, regardless of whether you got approval or not, then you are not being a people pleaser or a doormat. So now how do you then tune in more. So one of the things that, um, another question that came up from uh, my last video is that I spoke about listening to the voices inside. And so how do you tune in more to the voices inside instead of the voices outside? So one of the things I suggest is that the way you tune in more is you don't share everything with the outer world until you're ready. Um, another person also asked me this question is that they felt that when they shared things with the outer world, with people, um, they found that it diluted what they were feeling. It diluted their ideas. And so this is exactly what happened with me is that when I was sharing before I was ready, because it feels like, oh my God, this is a light bulb moment for me. Oh my God, I get it. I understand. I want to share it. I want to shout it from the rooftops. This is what it felt like for me when I came back from my near-death experience. But when I um, started sharing it, I wasn't quite ready. I didn't have answers to people's questions. I wasn't solid in my own thinking. And so as I started to share it, um, I started to get blowback and, and, and questions and skepticisms. And instead of that making me stronger, it diluted it for me. It made me wonder about myself. And this is what I worry about with empaths. Because we feel things from the outer world so strongly, we have to be careful about sharing our feelings too early. And so it's best to actually keep 
your feelings to yourself first, not always, but first. Like maybe don't share too quickly. That's something I tend to do. I don't share them too quickly until I'm completely ready to share it, until I'm ready to hear or to face whatever, um, whatever criticism. And here's what's interesting is when I am sharing who I really am, who I would be, regardless of whether no one is watching or anyone is watching, it's when I'm at that point, when I'm ready to share, that's when I get the least criticism as well. So in other words, the dichotomy is like when I'm ready, when I feel, oh my God, this is so real. This is so me. This is what I have to do. This is what I have to say, regardless of what people think. That's when I get the least amount of criticism. So I think that with a lot of empaths, um, in order to empower your inner world more than your outer world, you need to hold on to your ideas until, uh, for a, like a gestation period until they are ready to hatch. Don't hatch them too early. Don't hatch all your insights and your thoughts and everything too early because what it'll do is it'll deflate you. Or that's what it does me. It deflates me. Um, so that's, that's uh, something really important I wanted to say. Um, the, the way that we lose ourselves is that we give our power to the outer world, the outer voices and not the inner world. There are many, um, spiritual teachers around and we tend to give our power even to spiritual teachers. And if those spiritual teachers are helping you to take your power back and to empower yourself and to empower your own voice, then that's great. They're doing what they're meant to do. But if a teacher or a healer makes you feel disempowered and makes you feel that you need them to reach whatever it is, to reach your full potential or to reach in enlightenment and that you can't get there without them or that they are the gateway for you, then they are disempowering you um, and they are not a true spiritual teacher. So I just wanted to remind you of that, which, um, oh, let's go. We have some great questions. Uh, let's go to uh, Bethany. In fact, oh, we just had her on the screen. I was just going to go there if we've lost that. And Karin Roquet has comments. Thanks for this precious advice. Thank you, Karin. That's um, I really appreciate that. OK, it looks like we lost that question, that comment we had that I had a moment ago. That's the problem with Facebook. It goes by too fast. OK, it's I can see it again. Bethany Patchen Crandall. I hope I pronounced your name correctly. Um, Bethany says, I would love to hear your take on crystals. We can punch this up on the, sta on the screen. I would love to hear your take on crystals sometime, sometime. Is it all true or is there some religiosity built in that isn't? And know what stones are in your favorite necklaces that you wear frequently. Okay, so that's a great question. It's something I've rarely talked about. Um, and I actually do love crystals. I rarely talk about it because um, you, because exactly of the point you said, is there some religiosity to it? Is that I don't want people to have superstitious beliefs about crystals, but I actually do feel that they hold some kind of power because they have been on this earth for millennia, like forever, and they do have. Um, they do emit certain energies and different crystals have different energies. And some of the crystals that I love is um, the one I'm wearing right now here is Labradorite. I love that because that actually helps you to have clear thought. Um, and I play with crystals and I actually see what they do. So I read about them, but then I also try them on to see if it's really doing it for me. And the thing with choosing crystals is your, your sight, because again, it's your inner world. It's not about what the outside, what people are telling you. It's not about someone outside of you saying, this is the crystal you need. And this is the crystal you need to wear. Always go with your gut feeling, with everything, even with what I tell you. If it doesn't resonate with you, don't follow it. Don't listen to it. Go with what resonates with you. So even with crystals, I trust my own sight. If my eyesight is attracted to something and feels it's beautiful, 
It means it's what my energy needs right now. So I'm someone who believes in energy. This is why I use, I work with energy healers. I use homeopathy. Um, I, I love crystals. But you really need to feel into it. Um, I, my concern is people following things like a religion, like a dogma. That's not the thing because here's the danger. When you follow something dogmatically, what ends up happening is that it sets you up to fear when you don't follow it. Does that make sense to you? It's like if I get told that I need to do this in order to heal my whatever, then we start to feel is, oh my God, if I don't do this, then this is going to happen to me. I do not believe that. But these are things we plant in our mind and then we kind of, um, we kind of set ourselves up to fail. We set ourselves up to be in that state of fear because we're not following all the dogma. And then we then say, look, I didn't do that. And then this happened to me. But actually that thing only happened because we created a filter of fear through which we were viewing the world. And if you want to know about my, my idea, what I mean by filter, Watch my last video, which I made just last week, which is all about filters. And um, I, I'm forgetting the name. It's not at, at the top of my head. I'm forgetting the name of the last video I did, but it was all about filters. And when you view the world through your filters, that's kind of how you set up your reality. You set up your reality by who you are. And so this is why I'm against dogma. However, play with crystals and um um the voices in my head of course the voices in thank you danny you should pipe in more often people like your voice speaking of voices people like your voice and you should really pipe in more often um so i think if i piped in more people would tune out i don't think so i think people love your voice which reminds me we need to have you come on this show because this is the last show of the year. We need to have you come on in a few minutes to tell people about the overwhelming response the video got, which you were on and what we are, you know, and how overwhelmed we are and how we plan to deal with all the uh, answers and responses we got. So, um, uh, so maybe, would you like to come on now? I realize I don't have a chair. Danny's going to have to bring a chair with him. <laughs> um, I'm going to answer a question while he brings a chair. Ariel Michael asks, Anita, how do you know when it is the right time to share? Very good question. Um, I would ask my inner self when you feel compelled to share. So here's the question to ask yourself as to when it's the right time to share or not is, um, if I got no approval for it, uh, and if nobody agreed with me, would I be okay with it? That's, and when you are like, I don't care what people think. I don't care if people criticize me, approve of me, don't approve of me. Um, this is what I'm going to do. Then it's the right time to share. And that's when I started creating these videos. It was like, oh my God, I have to say this. Even if only two people are helped with this and a hundred people criticize me or a thousand people criticize me, I need to share this. And that's when I started my videos and oh my God, I haven't looked back. The responses I've got are amazing. And if you want to access all my previous videos, even the one, even the ones I just talked about, please, please go to my YouTube channel. They're all there. Um, I think there's about, I don't know, 80 or 90. In fact, um, I don't know if Danny can tell me that the magical Danny, but I think that uh, at the uh, last count, there was uh, something like uh, 80 videos there. So there's 80 videos. And uh, in fact, Danny, while you pull up, uh, you come up and pull up a chair, please sit down. Um, the, one of the questions I get asked a lot is, um, how do I deal with the fear of cancer? Especially if you are someone who's had cancer before and you are fearing it occurring again. So the video on that, I've actually done a video on that and that video is called, um, I've actually written it down. It's, um, what would I do knowing what I know now? What, what would I have done differently 
if I knew then what I know now. So that was done 10 months ago. So please check that out. What would I have done differently if I knew then what I know now? So for those of you who fear cancer, who fear disease, fear illness, particularly if you are someone who's sensitive, if you're empathic and you are affected by all the outside messages of being told that you're in remission and so on and so forth. So, um, uh, another video I would like you to check out, which I did nine months ago is the video call it's on recharging your inner batteries because as an empath, um, especially if you are an empath who is dealing with maybe a sick spouse or, um, uh, maybe children, special needs children or sick children. And these are things you would do anyway. It's not about people pleasing, but when you're an empath, you are absorbing a lot of energies around you. And the video that would most help you is recharging your inner battery. It's about taking care of yourself. A lot of empaths are very good at giving and giving, but they're not good at taking care of themselves. Thank you. Anne Compton. Anne Compton says that my videos have helped her. Abaya KP says your messages are all, always so apt for me. I'm so surprised every time I've always finished your talks feeling so rejuvenated. Wow. So precise and clear. And your pointings are, thank you very much. Wow. Thank you, Abaya. Thank you for watching. This is what I mean. I just love you guys so much. Um, I'm going to ask Danny to come in now. And then I wanted to talk about a couple of other things. Um, Are you sure you want me to A hundred percent. But I didn't shave. You don't have a chair for me. I know. There's no fanfare music for me. We should do the fanfare music. The ba 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 loo ba 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 Hello. Sorry, Freddie, Hello, you're Fred. being, <laughs> Freddie's being displaced. Okay. Oh my God. I like Fred. Freddie was there. Freddie was perfectly positioned. Yes. So I want you to. Hello, everybody. Hi. <laughs> um, we wish you a happy new year. We wish you a happy. Mm. That's the wrong tune. It is, but it's good. You have a good singing For voice. For 75 years, I've been singing it in the wrong tune. <laughs> you have, haven't you? Oh, my God. Nonetheless, <laughs> we wish you a happy new year. We wish you a happy new year. We wish you a happy new year. And many more. You should be on stage. I think I'm already you, on. I'm already on 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 screen. <laughs> you should have your own YouTube channel and your own stage presence. For those of you that actually think that I should have my own YouTube channel, please send another email. Um, <laughs> send it. No, it's in the comments. In the comments, he should please tell him he needs his own show. All right, in 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 the comments. So. Um, <laughs> So we, we were overwhelmed by the number of emails. <laughs> you, you I'm, 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 I'm not saying anything. <laughs> I'm not saying anything. I have I'm, to get I'm, down. I'm, I'm just observing what I can see on the, on the, on the monitor over here. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Yes. I have to get down to your, to, no. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> I'm trying. No. <laughs> but it's only because you don't have a chair. Yes. Um, so or, or hair. <laughs> yeah, it's my hair. That's yes, right. Exactly. I'm an heir above you. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um, and we were really They're probably all getting really bored of my corny jokes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I so. I think we should get back to the subject at hand. I think they love you. They really do. <laughs> because the number of emails that we got and, and, and yeah, and this is just a fun year end show, but the number of emails that we got um, when Danny, after Danny was on that show and talking about a support system for for caregivers, um, particularly, you know, I, I mean, every kind of caregiver, sensitive caregivers, other care, just empath caregivers, but just um, uh, some kind of a support system. So many people wanted to be part of it. So we're now trying to figure out how we can bring all these people together so we can manifest something good. Yeah, the, the, uh, the response was actually far, far, far more than I'd actually expected. Um, uh, many of these responses were in the comments, of course. Many of them uh, also were sent by uh, email to Anita's assistant, uh, Roz. 
uh, and she's forwarded them to me. Um, so I've set up a separate folder, uh, and I'm honestly trying to. I, I, I'm not brought to tears very easily, but yet, yet again, all those responses. I mean, uh, they, they were really, really emotional. So if you wrote, thank you very much. Um, it, it, it's 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 really nice to see how many people out there you know, resonated and how many people think that this is something that, that should be done. Um, I, I'm, I'm just finishing up a, a, a couple of things right now, but uh, over the next couple of weeks, I'm actually going to go back through all the emails. Um, and we have to try and figure out some way of, uh, you know, bringing together everybody that wrote so that we can try and see, you know, um, What's a safe and sustainable way to to try and start um, whatever it is that's that's going to start? I, I I have no idea how it's going to build out, how it's going to pan out, who's going to you know jump on board and help in what capacity and run in what capacity. But thank you very much. Um, yeah, I I I, I, I yeah, yeah. This is where I get tongue tied. You know, I'm I'm really happy behind the camera. I know exactly my universe, but this is something that's a little bit out of my league. Um, but I so think it's 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 something that you know, we need to do. We um, need to do. Yeah, a lot of people actually said that there is no such support network, that at least not that they have access to. So um, a first step would be to bring all these people together who wrote yeah, in. Exactly. And and that's that's where we're a little bit stuck in. If anyone has any ideas, like would we create a Facebook platform for them, like a Facebook group and invite them all to join? But there are also people who say they don't use Facebook, um, but and they saw this video, the video of Danny saying that uh, they saw it on YouTube or some other platform yeah. or through my newsletter or something like that. So, um, yes, yeah, so so we have to f figure out a way. And if anyone has any ideas, how do we bring all these people together? How do we create something? So right now, like we had no idea we would receive this many responses. Yeah, well, it'll have to be something in the, digi in the digital it, it would have to be an online support system, exactly. an online community, an online Un support Unless system. everybody who wrote in lives in Los Angeles, then we can all meet up for coffee at Starbucks or something. Yeah, <laughs> but an online community would be great with resources where people can contribute their resources exactly. and contribute links and videos and things like that. And we would be regular contributors as well. So well, I, I think more than just contributing links and, and, and things, Mm -hmm. right. it's, it's, I think it has to be a little more than that because there's hundreds of videos out there yeah. that purport to say, okay, this is what you do. Yeah. I think it needs to be f beyond just a link to another video. Right? You can very easily go into a search engine and you know, type in you know, help, for, you know, help with dealing with a, with a sick um, loved one, relative, child, parent, you know, whatever. I agree. So, uh, yeah. So what would you suggest that it could be? Yeah, but I, I agree. I, I don't know. But yeah. it, that's, that's where a, a little think tank would, would, would have to, to come in. And, I like that. You know, I, 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 I don't know. Maybe somebody who's experienced with, I don't know, putting together, I don't know, an online digital conference event you know, things, whatever. It would have you know. to be one that's um, also a safe arena, a very safe arena, because I have seen too many digital platforms that start out well-meaning and then they deteriorate yeah. because yeah. people, a lot of people do bring out their worst side on digital yeah. media. Yeah, it's unfortunate and people ca come in and decide, hey, you know, this is a, going to be a, a soapbox for me. And it's like, Get out. <laughs> yeah. Right. yeah. If, if you want a soapbox, yeah. get out. <laughs> you know, go, 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 go somewhere else. Right. The, the, uh, this I, is really a place yeah, to nurture have, the people who are. Exactly. Yeah. I have an idea for what I want this thing to be. Um, and yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, what we are thinking is somewhere that's really safe, where people can come together and share uh, their heart because they might be caring for someone and somewhere where they won't be judged 
at all. Even if they are feeling that they are in a situation where they feel trapped and they feel scared to share their vulnerability because they don't want to be judged as not being loving towards someone who they are caring for who's sick, but the person caring for them may be completely drained and feeling like they're unloving if they don't keep doing it. So it needs to be an arena where they can feel safe enough to even share their vulnerabilities like that without the fear of being judged or condemned in any way. That's the kind of thing I'm thinking of. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. I think that's what's needed. There aren't enough online safe arenas for vulnerable people. Exactly. And that's that's the fear I have because because that's a, a social media and online um, interaction and online communities is a whole other minefield for vulnerable people, vulnerable and um, empathic people. Mm. Yeah, it's a great place to take advantage of people. Yeah, so yeah, <laughs> so we need to have that balance as well, exactly. you know, like to protect so, people. Yeah. So if you're looking to exploit this, go away. Yeah. <laughs> and for the rest of you? <laughs> you're all welcome. Exactly. And, and, and as I say, um, give me about, to, about until about the... the uh, the, the second week of January and I'll you know start getting back and you know we'll see how we can uh, yeah we'll see how and where and what yeah and who knows there might be people who will even respond to this what we've just well, said. I'm sure I'm sure yeah. I'm sure you know it's 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 yeah yeah it's 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 a, excuse me I'm tongue-tied again but uh, it's it's something that our world is sorely lacking you know, it's a it's a it's a resource um, you know, I felt really passionately about this for, for many years. Um, I'll stop now. <laughs> but actually, I think, our... I think everybody gets the impression. Everybody's here to watch your no, show. No, you no, 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 no. They love you. They, I <laughs> promise you. I'm going to go back and look at the comments over here. And it's like, oh, like unsubscribe, can... <laughs> unsubscribe, unsubscribe. <laughs> On the contrary. <laughs> On the contrary. You'll be pulling in so many more people. Because here's the thing. I was actually going to talk about this today. Is that... Um, you know, you, you, you said something about that there isn't enough uh, to support such people, but there isn't enough in our world to support anybody who is vulnerable, sensitive, empathetic, strong, uh, empathetic and um, sensitive, you know, a anybody who's like that. Anybody the Bureau who... of Consumer Affairs. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, you know, I am reminded of a... a a story, a true, an incident from when I was really young, and I was a teenager. I was maybe seventeen or, so, uh, or thereabouts, and there was um, a, a man, boy. I don't know what would you call someone who's nineteen, a guy who was about nineteen years old when I was seventeen, and I admired him and probably even had a crush on him. He was in my community. <laughs> I know. <laughs> before I met you, before I met you. No, but unfortunately, this is a very sad story. The reason why I really liked him a lot is because he was the most sensitive man, male, that I had ever met in my life. I couldn't see it back then. I'm looking back now and I am understanding now as an adult, you know, in my 50s, only now I understand that I'm an empath and what it means to be an empath. And, I'm, and a lot of things from my childhood are now making sense to me as to how the criticism was like so magnified in my own head and why I carried this victim mentality and all of these things are making sense. And I even understand why I had a crush on this young man um, who was only two years or something older than me. And he was just somebody who I thought was just the most wonderful, beautiful human being ever, like ever. Um, but sadly, one day he actually took his own life, which was like the saddest thing for me. Uh, it took me a long time to get over that he would do that, that he would take his own life because I thought a beautiful person like him why would he do that? And I thought the world was really poorer for, for him having done that. Now, when he was alive, <clears throat> people would constantly say to him that, oh, you think too much. Oh, you're so sensitive. Oh, you, 
um, you've got to man up and you've got to grow a thicker skin. And they would say all this about him. When he had passed, when he'd crossed into the other realm, people were saying things like, wow, he was too good for this world. He was, a, he was ahead of his time. He was, and they would say all this stuff about him. Why couldn't they appreciate that while he was still alive? And this is something that's really impacted me is that we have a world that does not, or a paradigm that does not support people who are like that. And, and then we only appreciate them after they're gone. And so this is what drives me to speak about what I speak about. It's what drives me to share what I share, because I actually feel that when somebody, if somebody tries to knock me down, that is exactly the paradigm that I am trying to change. In other words, they are only confirming that, hey, but I am actually wanting to stand up for the sensitive people, for the ones who, when they are gone, we say, oh my God, they were ahead of their time. Oh my gosh, um, they were too good for this planet. Um, and, and also, I feel that um, on the one hand, um, I grew up in a world that was patriarchal and I was very much feeling like it was run by men for men in the reality that I grew up in. On the other hand, um, I feel that sensitive men have it harder than sensitive women. That's true. Yeah, because sensitive men are the ones who are told boys don't cry and man up and grow a thicker skin. And Absolutely. All that. So and we're and then they get And then they get unnecessarily bullied. Yeah. yeah. And hence sometimes take their own lives. Yeah. So I, that, 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 that breaks a man. That seriously breaks him. Yeah. So and, and it's very few people who don't break. Yep. I'm glad you didn't break. Well, I don't know. <laughs> I, mean, I, I might be completely... <laughs> Correct. <laughs> well, I dented. <laughs> I love you just the way you are. Ah, oh, thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> See, I keep slouching because I'm looking at the screen. I'm looking at the screen, and and I'm taller you're than you. You're not supposed so to like... look at the screen. You're supposed to look at the audience. I am, but I'm glancing at the screen because you're on the screen. When you're not on it, I look at the audience. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. I'm going to say. Goodbye. <laughs> and you're going to punch up a few comments, but exactly. I want to. Okay. <laughs> okay. I will. I will. Uh, I will read a few more comments. And so here's the thing: I can only see your comments when Danny is behind the camera because he punches up the comments for me. So I have no idea what everybody has been saying, but I'm going to trust you. It's Everybody's all... unsubscribed already. <laughs> no, 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 no. I think they're probably calling all their all their friends and their hey, husbands. Hey, look at that guy over there. Hey, there's a guy over there. Like he's short and uh, he's got he's Stop. got a really good hairstyle. Yes, yes, exactly. They're envying your hairstyle. Ab- Absolutely. You know. <laughs> That's why I married you, because of your hairstyle. Ah, uh, yeah, this is true. <laughs> this is true. So, everybody, um, on behalf of me, before I uh, before I go back to um, the, the control room, um, Happy New Year. Um, May, and I, and I think Anita joins me in, in, in this, but she'll have her own little message for you, I'm sure. May the New Year bring with it all of the, the happiness, the joy, the love, the warmth, the giggles that you saw you 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 deserve and maybe just maybe a glass or two of something really really nice at the stroke of midnight yes <laughs> <laughs> happy new year everybody yes <laughs> bye <laughs> Mwah. Mwah. <laughs> um, so um, another thing I get asked a lot is a surprising number of people that actually ask when am I going to be speaking or doing an event in LA or in California or Southern California. So I want to tell you that in February I've got two events in California and one of them is at the Conscious Life Expo. So I wanted to just tell you it's a mini workshop that I'll be doing at the Conscious Life Expo in February in Los Angeles. Um, which is at the airport Hilton. So please, please check it out. Please come and say hello to me if you're in the area. If you live in Los Angeles, if you're around Los Angeles, if you're in Southern California, please come along. 
Um, and also in February, I am doing um, a retreat at the Multiversity in Northern California. And so check out, it's, um, so that one's called The Power of Transformation, but please check out my website. I love to see you, just would love to see you, would love to say hello to you, um, and love your comments. Patricia and Anzi Day. Hi, Anita, keep doing what you and Danny do. Thank you both. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. And I, again, as I said, I always love hearing from all of you. Let's go to a couple of um, good questions and long questions, and then we'll wish everybody a nice, happy new year. Um, and so also, as I was saying, that if you check out my other videos, a lot of questions that people write in have already been answered in the past. And so what I'll try and do is even speak about some of the other videos you need to go back and watch so that you're guided or that you know which ones to go back and watch. Daniel Leahy, oh, thank you. So let's punch this up on the screen. Hi, Daniel, and thank you for posting and for watching. You two are so amazingly brilliant, thank you. Regarding Danny's idea of some sort of streaming accessible medium for caregivers of extremely sick people, is it possible for a call-in talk show per week that Danny could facilitate? Ooh, I like that idea. Danny could be the next Frasier regarding supporting people who are experiencing fatigue, grief, and lack of support. That's actually a very good idea. I would love that idea. I love that idea. I thought you would. I love that idea. Yay. I love that idea. Yeah, I think that would be so cool. Oh my God, thank you, Daniel. That's, uh, see, from one Danny to another, one Daniel to another. Oh my gosh, you two should get together. That's a great idea. See, we've got, we're one step closer. Um, so, wow, I'm, I think that would be so great that you could be the next Frasier. <laughs> Daniel or Danny has left the building or entered the building. Um, so another question I get is that, um, what, what goes on in the retreats? So just real quickly, I'm going to tell you what happens in the retreats. In the retreats, we actually do a lot of, um, meditation. You do a lot of different exercises in that I give you something to ponder over. You ponder over it, you write about it, I teach you how to journal. We are also conscious of things like learning to receive. We're conscious of listening to the voices and tuning into our inner self instead of giving our power to the outer world. Those are the kinds of things that we do in our retreats and we do it for five or seven days straight depending how long the retreat is. So even when you're not in a workshop with me and you're off having a meal or if it's the cruise and you're off on a tour, you're still doing it from that perspective of what we are learning during the workshops. You're still viewing the world through different eyes. That's what's really great about being together for five or seven days. You're actually viewing the world and living life and eating and touring and seeing the world and, and connecting with people, but through the eyes of being an, a being who is connected to their inner self as opposed to giving our power to the outer world. So that's kind of what I try and do in the retreats. Um, thank you for all your beautiful comments. Cindy Priam Moreland is, I think people fear that which they don't understand. Yes, you are quite correct. They fear that which they don't understand. And unfortunately also we live in a paradigm that doesn't foster self-understanding. Um, we live in a world that fosters learning from the outside in as opposed to learning from the inside out. In other words, we take our information from teachers who tell us this is what happened and they tell it to us as facts and we have to absorb facts. We don't check in to what we are feeling inside. If we tuned into our feelings from the time we were young, and if we believed our feelings, if we trusted our feelings, if we trusted our intuition, if we trusted what, um, what we sensed and saw, um, we, then we would have less fear. We would really be much more fearless. Um, Christian 
Saller says, retreat anywhere in Europe? I have a mini workshop in Basel coming up in March. So I'd love for you to join me there. And also I have a mini in workshop, both of which are intensive, but they're just one day long. Uh, so one in Basel in March, March 2nd, I believe, and March 3rd, March 3rd, and a second one in, in Bristol, England, on March 16th, which happens to be my birthday, but um, we can all celebrate after in the evening or during, maybe that maybe that workshop will be one big celebration um so that one is in march 16th so for all the people from the uk who write in i will be in the uk and i will be speaking on march 16th 2019 and i'm hoping to go and visit and do a little tour of bath just before going to bristol so i have a few days off because i'll be going to a couple of other cities in between but i love seeing you at my events and if i can't see if you can't make it to my events I'm still here on Facebook and YouTube so please check in on my videos I I still read the comments I go back and read the comments after the video and um, I try and click like or love to as many as I can please please don't take it personally if I don't click yours it does not mean I disapprove of you I know you're all such beautiful sensitive souls and that's why I love you but it absolutely does not mean I disapprove of your comment if I haven't clicked it it just means I haven't seen it I haven't seen it yet or haven't seen it because Facebook is a bit strange with their algorithms they don't show you all the comments they show them to you in a different order than they show them to me but um, please know that if I see your comment I will click like um, so don't take offense if there's no click anyway um, have a wonderful end of the year a wonderful new year and I really really hope that 2019 brings you everything that you hope and dream in the meantime I'm going to spend the week in gratitude of everything that's amazing and I'd love to invite you to do the same you can even tell me in the comments below what are you grateful for what are you grateful for from 2018 what are you grateful for in your life I'd love to hear it and until next week I'll see you next week and bye everyone see you in 2019